Uh, hello, my name is Keith Stanley. I am. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege to really be able to interview this young man. If I could say, young Bobby, <laughs> uh, I take is, it. Uh, do you take it? Um, he's played such a major role with the Newer Side Partners for the past few years since we, we came on. I think it was 2018, Bobby, was it? Yes, when I came on officially, it was 2018. But before that, he was actually uh, still working with us uh, um, via Safe and Sound. So. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have Bobby McQuay of the New Messiah Partners. Um, Bobby, you're looking good. How, first of all, how are you surviving in this era of COVID-19? Uh, well, I would be remiss if I didn't say it was a challenge in the beginning, but I think I'm, I think I'm um, rising to the um, rising to the level of capabilities, <laughs> you know, and meeting it, meeting this challenge. But I'm doing good, and my family is doing well. Um, certainly it's uh, learned behavior, learning new behaviors, because I am a community person by nature, shaking people's hand, communicating with people, being closer than six feet is all, you know, for the past 20 years, that's kind of been my life. So wow. it's certainly an adjustment. And uh, the family is doing okay in this time of COVID-19? Yes. Um, I can report that we haven't had one reportable case in my family. People have gotten sick, but it hadn't been the main sickness. No, it's good to hear, man. Yeah. Um, so the reason I wanted to interview you, man, you have been a tremendous asset for the Near West Side Partners, man. You have came on and just have done some amazing work. Um, you are one of the program managers for the Near West Side. You manage a number of different programs, including our safety programs, um, our ambassador program, our graffiti program you're doing just quite a bit in that area so before we get into what you're actually doing for near west side let's talk a little about that history and um your past you uh uh you've been in this space for quite some time can you tell us about let's start off with just your, your beginning how did you start how did you get on this path what well, led you to the near west side partners you know that it, it's interesting and i'm not gonna spend too much time getting to how i got there but I, I would like to say I'm an implant um, to the city of Milwaukee from Gary, Indiana. My mom moved me here in 1979 with um, my auntie and my cousin to um, for us to have a future and a, and, and a better start than what she thought that we would have in Gary. My mother must have had a crystal ball because she was spot on with some of the ways that the city ended, to, ended up declining. And I say that because at the end, I'm going to say one of the reasons why I love the city of Milwaukee, but since I moved here in 1979, Milwaukee has been my home. The Washington Park neighborhood has been my home. I've been in this. I've been in the Washington Park neighborhood as a landlord, homeowner, renter uh, since uh, since about 1983. Yeah, you know, so my history goes back here. I love taking my kids to vote when I vote at Washington High School, so I could show my pictures up there. Remember, see that when daddy licked it good, it was about 40 pounds lighter. <laughs> City champions. <laughs> you know, that's one of the little joys of being in the community as long as I have been here. Um, uh, so, yeah, no, ahead, like, so, uh, yeah, so tell me about that. So, you watched the park in, in the area over there near West Side and Washington Park is kind of your stomping ground. I think you even told me a story that you, the own the challenge block that near West Side Partners actually owns, you have. History there. You were there as a young man. Yes. Yeah. Um, this um, wow. You know, the carriage house right across the street. Um, it's a it's a Rashid property now. You, I remember when Concordia University was there, and it was a it was a a, a, a fraternity house for men. The back wow. carriage house was my mother's first apartment that she rented on her own. Wow, this was, here. Yeah, that's that's the thirty was it thirty fourth in Highland? Yes. 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 Yeah. I, I my room was right in the back. It's a it's a two bedroom apartment up above the garage. I used to wow. walk down the alley to Cole's food store, get donuts before, um, where Annalise uh, teaches piano lessons. That was the corner where my bus stop was. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Who would have known all these years later, I'd still be driving and walking up the streets. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, you know, I can go down a lot of blocks and have, and, you know, and have uh, the muscle memory to recall things that may have happened there. 
you know, and, and that's and that's a good thing. And also, that's one of the things that, you know, that really um, have hardens my love for the city of Milwaukee, the Washington Park neighborhood, the Midwest Side Partners neighborhood. Most of the time, if you ask someone, unless they're really connected and plugged in, they wouldn't know the difference between Sherman Park, Washington Park, and the Midwest Side Partners. Mm -hmm. Because Literally in about seven minutes, you can go through all three neighborhoods That's if you right. just continue down Sherman. That's right. And so let's talk a little about your history, which you, which your community organizing. You said I think you started with the, uh, I'm, I'm spacing her name, but Doctor. Um, yeah, no, Doctor Ernestine Willis. Yes, Ernestine Willis. Yes. Yes. So, about um, so um, when I when I first graduated high school. I didn't take the traditional route to college. I didn't exactly know exactly what I wanted to do in college, so I went the route of working. At at that time, you know, in the '90s, um, you know, I felt like a man had to have money in his pocket, and at the mm -hmm. time, it was a way of battle between education and going to work. So mm -hmm. I chose the work route. <laughs> yeah, as you can tell, I was a little naive and dumb, but I chose the work route, <laughs> and. It, it, it turned out really well for me. Um, it allowed me to buy my first property in the, in the, in the um, Sherman Park area, second property in the Washington Park neighborhood. And eventually I bought, a, uh, I bought a small apartment building and converted it into a liquor store on 20th wow. and Center. I, mm -hmm. In 1999, uh, I, worked, I worked seven and a half years for Sigma Aldrich Chemical Company, where I learned my skills of politicking then. <laughs> And, and and talking with people because at the time uh, we were a non-union company and there was talk of us getting a union and I was one of the people that was approached with helping organizing and getting the thoughts of the workers around the union. Wow. Um, so I left I left there to open up my own business. So once I um, opened up my own business, I ran it from 1999 and I sold in 2003. And I went to school and I went back to college. When I graduated mm -hmm. college, I enrolled in MATC in the human service program. An interesting story about that. I was, I was, uh, I was laying around figuring out what I'm gonna do next. <laughs> and I could not figure it out. But um, it was this show that used to come on called Judge and Amy. And the mother was a social worker. And I used to watch that show all the time around 12 o'clock, <laughs> you know. And um, I said, wow, that's what I that's what I want to do. I've always helped people, but I didn't really have a, a, a name for what I was doing. Um, but once I put two and two together, I, then I enrolled at MATC in the human service department because it's a two year school. So they didn't have a official social working department. So mm -hmm. I, I went to um, MATC, graduated with my human service degree. I then attended Cardinal Stretch and was in my capstone getting ready to graduate, but I felt I needed a little more training. So I then withdrew from Cardinal Stretch and enrolled at UWM. But in the meantime, after I, I enrolled in UWM, I applied for this um, job working at the neighborhood house. And at the neighborhood house, it was uh, that's when I met Dr. Ernestine Willis. She ran the CHIMSY program, and that stands for co um, um, Community Help Improving uh, C H I M P Community Improvement Children's Health. Mm -hmm. So, our main task there was to um, address the immunization problem in Milwaukee mm -hmm. at the time in 2000 and 2006. We had one of the lowest immunization rates in the in the in the state of Wisconsin, and then mm -hmm. we focused on five three zip codes predominantly because those five three zip codes represented you know a high rate of kids not being immunized and when she was awarded the grant she wanted to hire people to work in the community and that was my first and she that, that was my first employment to doing community organizing so i learned a lot from the um from the chimsey program mm -hmm. and so uh, what did you do after the chimsey program well i started off <laughs> uh, i started off uh, going door to door, trying to sign people up to uh, to allow us to follow them in their immunizations and mm. their child immunizations, doing surveys, asking, do they believe in immunizations? Why not? Um, I got the door slammed on me a hundred times, but I was there knocking on a hundred the first time. 
you know, so I really cut my teeth and burnt a lot of shoe leather going door to door on the 53208, 53210, 53212, and 53206 neighborhoods. Wow. Yeah. So I worked for Chimsey for seven and a half years. And during that time, I went from just an organizer to a supervisor. So mm -hmm. where I started to supervise people to do what I was doing, going door to door and doing the organizing portion, while I focused on data, uh, retaining, retaining clients, follow-ups, contacting uh, family members when a kid got behind on an immunization by a week, seeing what kind of assistance that we could be. And then I grand morphed into infant mortality because Milwaukee mm -hmm. has some of the highest infant mortality rates in the state as well. So I was able to morph with the program and learn under Dr. Ernestine Willis. Uh, Clarence Johnson was the executive director at the neighborhood house. Richard wow. Cox, a, a sheriff, an uh, uh, ex-sheriff, uh, ex was uh, actually became the executive director of the neighborhood house after Clarence left. Mm -hmm. um, and I worked with Dr. Pat McManus on that as well as Dr. Um, Moeller. You know, I worked with, I learned a lot from professionals on how to conduct research. So when it comes to your time frame, you mentioned that you had the, uh, just for the sake of the audience, you had a, uh, a liquor store, you had some income property, you yes. worked for Chimit, Chim, 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 Chim. Well, I, yeah, and, and actually I was, actually I was employed by the Next Door Foundation, but I was assigned to work with the Chimsey grant. And, so you know, <laughs> what's, the, what's the timeline on that? So so when did you, from what to what? Okay, from, from uh, 1999 to 2003, I ran, a, I ran my liquor store and was a property owner. At that mm -hmm. time, I had uh, roughly four, four duplexes and a small building with the store. So mm -hmm. I was doing, I was doing, you know, I was doing really, really good for myself. After I sold the store, I kind of just had my properties and was trying to figure out what I wanted to do what stimulated me and what you know what the rest of my future was going to look like and i enrolled in school in 2003 and i grad and i graduated from matc in 2005 i began working with the chimsey with the neighborhood house um in 2006 and and why i left the neighborhood house i mean the the chimsey program and the next Draft foundation was my daughter got sick she had a medulla blastoma tumor on the brain at the age of two. Mm -hmm. I um found out and I found out August 11th, August 13th, she had, you know, she had to have surgery. The doctors were telling me and my wife that this is um we need to move fast. So we had to make a quick decision. After my daughter had the surgery, I tried to come to work for maybe about two weeks and I really wasn't there. And I was fortunate enough to have the ability to say that, you know, I, I'm i gonna not go to go back to work. And Dr. Mm -hmm. Ernest A. Willis and, and all of the professionals that I met was in my corner. Uh, they gave us, gave me great support. They even talked me through medical procedures because I did have medical questions and they happened to be doctors. And, um, wow. I, and they allowed me to, you know, to leave gracefully. And mm -hmm. and that helped me to help get my daughter, you know, back safe and healthy and strong. And uh, when I came, when I entered back into the work world, because I was gone for probably about two years, I had to go through the chemotherapy sessions with my daughter. And mm -hmm. she had uh, six high dose. Well, she had six sessions of chemotherapy, three regular doses and three high dose. And after about a year and a half when everything was kind of done, I started to, you know, look back to see, okay, now it's time for me to get back into the work world. I've done everything that I could do and everything seemed to be headed in the right direction. So I felt it was time for me to get back in the work world. And yeah. that's when I started to work for, I think it was Washington Park Partners. Mm. Yeah, but in the meantime- now, what, 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 now, what year was that when you started with Washington Park Partners? I believe I started with Washington Park Partners in 2000, and I want to say 2013, 11 or 13. Okay. It was, it was and odd how long were you, How long were you there, and what did you do? Okay, when I was at Washington, when I was with Washington Park Partners, I was a community organizer. 
And um, there, again, I use my talent of um, survey collecting and gathering and introducing myself to people, talking with people, knocking on doors, uh, sharing information. Um, I was actually employed for Washington Park Partners working off a CDBG grant from the city of Milwaukee as a community mm -hmm. organizer. Mm. Yeah, so, so uh, I would say I know we're getting closer to the nearest side. Then you have closer. Safe, safe and sound. Um, the, when did I go to Safe and Sound? Yeah. I actually went to. Or am I, am I skipping ahead too far? Well, I spent the year at River West as a as a uh, as an employment coach. Oh, okay. working with working with River West and uh, Mr. Johnson. Wow. And, uh, yeah. As an executive director at, at, at River West. So I did a year there. And then that got me to, I want to say, 2015, 2016. And that's mm -hmm. when I think I started at, um, yeah, because that's when I started at uh, Safe and Sound. Wow. Wow. And yeah. so how long were you at Safe and Sound? I was at Safe and Sound for 18 months. Mm, wow. And then, yeah. uh, you officially started where you were working with Near West Side during that time, correct? Yes, I was. Yes, I was. I was working with Safe and Sound. Um, and um, at the time, I was part of the CPU team. I was, mm -hmm. uh, at the time, I was called a CPU coordinator, where I worked with the crime prevention unit at the third district in the Near West Side, inside the Near West Side Partners boundaries. And what I did there was pretty much follow up with. Um, follow up with complaints that was made to police, see if there was a way to resolve it, and also be a, li a liaison to community residents. Sometimes mm. when people call the police and it's really one of those non-violent offenses, um, things get lost in, trans in transition. Mm -hmm. They don't get back to the people that made the complaint. There's no follow-up. So part of what I did was um, follow-up and work in the community, letting community residents um, know the best way to work with MPD to get the best results. So it seems like this, uh, a number of things in your life has um, prepared you for this position. You mentioned earlier how, you know, you, you worked with the Tenji program and you had the door slammed in your face, but you learned resilience. Yeah. You learned about, I'm sure you learned some things as far as business running a liquor store and mm -hmm. the personal event, which is, having your daughter go through what she went through. And I think Gabe may have, and this is my assumption, may have gave you some insight on how this is pain and suffering and how people, other families deal with it and how you deal with it and then yes. how you can approach people when they're dealing with it. So I want to talk about then with the, in, in light of those experiences, um, uh, first of all, what are you doing for the Near West Side Partners? And then how has those experiences helped you with, with the work you're doing? Okay, so let me take the second question first and then come back to the first question. Mm -hmm. During this time, there's a few different things that I accomplished outside of formal college. I completed the NEKC Making Connections program. That program mm -hmm. was, uh, that was a, uh, I wanna say that was a, I think it was 22 week program. It was intense. Mm -hmm. Um, learning how to look at the community. Um, college is great and college have a lot of X's and O's and technical, but there's a level of learning that you have to do that you can't get from anything but experience. Mm -hmm. And through the Annie Casey Foundation, um, I was working with Dr. Joanne Gray Murray and mm -hmm. I was taught really how to look, look at my block and how to understand mm -hmm. what what forces are, are at play when you look at a block? Mm -hmm. What is normal and what has just become to be accepted? Mm -hmm. I also graduate, graduated from Cardinal Stretch Resident Leadership Academy, which was really rigorous as, as well. And that program was, a, uh, that was a 15 month program there. Mm -hmm. uh, it, all, it furthered, how do you take action and how do you advocate for your community? And I learned exactly how to address and where complaints should go and uh, mm -hmm. how to argue, articulate the arguments and advocate for the community and, mm -hmm. and, and what makes a community a community, what makes a neighborhood a neighborhood. I learned processes mm -hmm. with the city 
the state and the county, the relationships with them. Um, then I graduated from the anchor program where I learned how real estate, commercial real estate ties into all of that. So mm -hmm. I really kind of got myself well-rounded with what makes a community tick. And mm -hmm. uh, the anchor program is, is a program that focuses on commercial real estate development. And let me and, just make sure I'm clear on this. Yeah. So you, you outside of getting your education, you um, earlier you went through several three programs that you mentioned so far. Yes. The Acre program via Marquette University, the Resident Leader, Resident Leadership Academy, Cardinal Stretch. Resident Leadership Academy at Cardinal Stretch, and what was the last? Doctor Mitchell. One? Say it again. And, and that was with Doctor Mitchell. Doctor Mitchell. Cardinal Stretch, yeah. And uh, um, and then the Make It Connection program with Dr. Joanne Gray Murray. And which, uh, also which, a gentleman by the name of Bob Clark was kind of like the hands-on person. And what what school was that associated with? Or was it a, um, was that it was just associated as associated with the Annie Casey Foundation. Wow, and, so three different programs yeah. uh, that you took outside of just regular schooling that allowed you yes. or helped you inform your decision making and gave you the training you need to do the work that you do now exactly some uh, and i'm a little <laughs> i'm a little different in a way that some things have to make sense to me i have to find a way for it to make sense mm -hmm. school you can take tests you can read manuals and that's great but it really didn't get to the question of what made my community look the way my community looked and again mm -hmm. this had a lot to do with as I said in the beginning, I you know I come from Gary, Indiana, and since since you know that city, my city that I was born in, has fell on some extremely hard times, and I love the city of Milwaukee, and I never wanted to see it go through the the transformation that my hometown uh, that I was born in went went through. So I felt that I really felt like it was my responsibility to understand all the dynamics of how community work, how city work how government works so that I can be informed when I talk to residents, when I talk to community leaders, when I talk to business people, when I talk to politicians, I like to come from the perspective of being informed so I can really understand what they're trying to articulate and how it resonates to on the ground. So these experiences that shaped you and helped you get a better understanding of this process, um, how do they help you now with what you're doing now? So what are they, I want to go to go talk about that. So what are you doing, but how has these experiences helped you? Well, I would say that the New West Side Partners um, position as, as being a community safety and outreach manager, it's like a combination of everything that I've taught myself and trained myself to work for. In the beginning, you come from a position where you make complaints, you just complain. Mm -hmm. um, then I was in a position where, okay, I can hear some of the complaints and I can make sure the complaints get to the right departments. Mm -hmm. And the Near West Side Partners, we actually in a position to do some changing and some implementation and changing communities through the Choice Neighborhood Initiative, through the programming that um, the Near West Side Partners allow us to do boots on the ground and get actual real people's opinion. And when I say real people, people that live on the blocks that we're making decisions for and that we're trying to change. Mm -hmm. and, and having my background, it allows me to really communicate with a multitude of people because mm -hmm. I, I have um, the empathy of a mother raising a child by herself. I was, my, my mom was a single parent. Mm -hmm. I know what struggle looked like. I know mm -hmm. what, most importantly, I know what struggle feels like when you where you are helpless to do something about it from a kid's perspective. I also mm -hmm. understand a father, I'm a family man, I have four beautiful children and a wife. I understand what getting up every day, going to work look like, and, you're, and it looks like you're not making any progress. <laughs> I, I want to talk a little bit about that. That 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 is a concept as a, you know, me and you both have shared this experience as far as community organizing, community economic development. Um, and so I, I want to talk just a little bit about that because I think a lot of times people outside of that experience who, who, who weren't raised, and I'm just going to go get really specific here. Okay. City of Milwaukee, City of Milwaukee, African American urban centers, urban areas. Um, 
to me, it seems like there's a certain language, there's a certain um, culture that a lot of people outside would understand. We talked about the um, that that I want to say the spirit or the understanding of struggle uh, and what that means, not just on the on the family, but on the children. Uh, I'm interested, just uh, you know, how how do you, if you with somebody from the outside said, so what do you mean by that? What do you how do you help people understand that there's a culture there, there is a, uh, whether good or bad, Yeah. there's a culture there that if you don't understand, it's hard for you to intercept and work with. Can you just talk a little bit about that? Yes. Um, we refer to a lot, of, a lot of our communities as challenged. One of the reasons, and, and, and it's not so much that the community itself is challenged, it's the people in the community that presents the challenges to community. If you remove the people, the community is the community. I mean, it's build as brick and mortar and, mm -hmm. and grass, trees, but it's the people. And a lot of times what we have in a city of Milwaukee that, you know, my 30 plus years of experience, I'm 47, my 30 plus years of experience in the city of Milwaukee, um, you have resources and you have people, but they don't connect. And when resources are put aside and they're not used, then they're taken and they and they redistributed to be used doing something else. Mm -hmm. What I've experienced a lot of times that the protocols does not allow for um, the people that need the resources to connect with them and use them. Either it's a lack of information or a, a, a lack of being able to actually utilize the program from a position that maybe I got a record, a felon. So maybe I don't qualify for the job training. Maybe I'm a def by definition, I'm the working poor, but I work at I, 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 I work at Walmart 36 hours a week because they won't let me work 40. But the training that's available to get me into the skills mm -hmm. trades is only offered during the time that I have to go to work. Right. So I can't quit this job and go to that job. It's situations like that and where people feel like they're the only one in that situation and they don't really know how to get out. What mm -hmm. I like to what I like to call myself is is a, is a liaison to help find and identify situations and show them how in their current situation they can get to this new situation. And mm -hmm. then I like to go and say, well, I know how we can help you achieve what it is you need to achieve from 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 let's just call it a job perspective uh employers mm -hmm. this is how this is the vehicle that we can use to get you the employees that you're looking for you know so um i'm curious about that then i want to dig a little bit deeper mm -hmm. how is this practical for you and the work that you do let's talk about that so we talk about this you know this resource and people's gap how do you see the Near West Side partners and the role that you're doing helping bring people together with some of the resources and with some of the gaps they have? And uh, yeah, start there. Yeah. So the Near West, um, the Near West Side partners has been active for a little over five years now, correct? Mm -hmm. When I came aboard working for Safe and Sound, you couldn't find too many people that actually live inside the boundaries that really knew exactly what near west side partners stand for or what they done yeah that's right so one of the things that when i became a uh, employee of near west side partners one of the things i wanted to focus on was actually the people that live in the community people that you can schedule a meeting that they never will show up to how do we identify these people how do we mm -hmm. talk to these people how do we make it where they understand what we're doing in the community so i had to figure out ways to make us more visible that's when they came up with the Bride for Your Thoughts concept. You know, one of the quickest ways to people get people attention is to feed them. That's right. You know, and while we were feeding them, we, you know, got a little bit of information, which seemed a little bit basic and a little on the surface, but it done a, a couple of things. When you give somebody something, they tend to remember your name mm -hmm. and your face. And then start to ingratiate myself, the ambassadors, and, and other staff members from the Near West Side Partners that came out and participated with people in the community that walk past and walk by. So mm -hmm. um, one of the things outside of that 
was to establish the ambassador program and get it on a consistent basis where we're using the same ambassadors going into the community and being, uh, uh, um, of course, being representatives for safety, and if, but also being ambassadors for information. You know, mm -hmm. being able to talk to to talk to residents and see if they have any concerns or if they have any things that's urgent. And now, um, after three and a half years, um, combined with Safe and Sound and me just being an employee for two years with Northwest Side Partners, there's traction there. We've mm -hmm. gotten a database together of people that live in the community that attended the Brock Your Thoughts. We've made communications where the people know what we're doing. They come into the office. Um, so we established a present, a presence. And once you establish a presence, now people feel comfortable with coming to talk to you and bringing them, bringing you their issues. And mm -hmm. so when we come to them and offering them something, the opportunity, or we need to get them involved with something, it's not extreme, it's not really a cold turkey deal. It's because we developed a rapport with them. I would so, say so we Rocks for your thoughts. You mentioned the ambassador program, but you also have done some work with um, with with uh, 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 I'm blanking out here uh, with texting. You've been yeah. able to use a texting program. You've also done some things with cameras. I want to talk a little bit about that texting yeah. cameras. Yeah, um, the camera initiative. The, the blight, the blight seeds. Let's talk just a little yeah. bit if you can about some of these things you're doing. Well, yeah. Um, let's 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 take the um. I say the blight suites, but let, let's take let's take the security camera initiative. Uh, working with the security camera initiative, we was able to help uh, apartment building owners, multi-unit managers um, get some cameras. And again, that also helped with developing rapport, and uh, it also helps with crime and safety. If people feel a little bit more safer knowing that it's an extra set of eyes out there, or that that information could could be recorded and, and retrieved at a later date. And that also helped us work and develop our uh, relationship with MPD. One of the one of the things that I believe that um, and I must say is that we've established a better relationship with the police officers that utilizes Waypoint and that's out on the street on a daily basis. And that means our beat cops. Mm. We worked effectively to catch dumpers. We worked effectively to um, to get board ups completed. Yeah, and mm -hmm. also to um, connect residents that's having issues that you know really wouldn't call nine one one, but have expressed us that they would like to talk to the police, able mm -hmm. to be that liaison to get that information to MPD and make that connection. That's one of the things. Um, the landlord, the landlord compact. Yes, um, that is something that I did not develop, but that the New West Side Partner has a strong landlord compact that's been going on for 20 plus years, but it also provided a vehicle for um, for us to not only work with the landlords, but now to start to morph that into actually working with the tenants inside the buildings. Now, we would love to raise the standard and the quality of our multi-unit apartment buildings within the near west side boundaries. And again, it comes from a position of first, the landlord compact was a little heavy handed, where we talked about the things that went wrong and calls for service. Now, I like to think since my addition to the team over the past few years, we've kind of gone in the direction of, okay, you got calls for service, but also your trash is overflowing, the aesthetics of your property. And mm -hmm. I think, and in fact, I know because of the, the work that's being done to some of the buildings that it's been effective of us, of our message and getting across to the multi-unit property owners. You know, so those are those are a couple, and then our blight sweeps. And I have to say, out of everything, I think I'm uh, probably a little prouder of the blight sweeps. The blight sweeps allows us, you know, myself, the ambassadors. What we did was we created a platform where we could register our complaints to the city of Milwaukee. Now, the city of Milwaukee has an online service request, but not many people was utilizing it in our area. So we started to utilize it, promote it at our meetings, promote it at the Brock for Your Thoughts. And we start to let uh, residents know that this is your community and the best way to make a difference is to use this mobile app. It, it's on your phone. People use their phones for more than, for more things. You can use your cell phones for more things 
then you know, but getting that word out to people and people actually figuring out how to do, how to use the online service app. And we did to, tutorials around that. And people make the complaints, the city get back with you with the complaints and they let you know that there's something they can do about it and they've done it or that that's not the city's responsibility. Therefore you have to address someone else about it. And we cre created a database and to date, we've made over 600, well over six, 700 um, online service requests within the near west side seven wow. neighborhoods of work that, that has gotten completed or in the process of getting completed. And, wow. and, you know, and again, the main message to take away from that is that before it was get things were happening and no one was made aware of it. Now people are being made aware of it mm -hmm. and how they can do something about it. And that again goes back to the sharing of information. Um, I know we got to wrap this up soon, but I have just a couple more questions. And so we don't have a lot of time. So let me know how I can, we can get as much as we can, squeeze it in. Um, <laughs> no problem. A no, couple programs you that you didn't mention that I I, I uh, see that you're managing and doing an excellent job. One, I was going to talk about the stencil project. Can you just talk a little bit about that? Yes. And in light of the COVID, you know, as we all know, life as we knew it, three months ago has changed, it's, it's probably gone. And in lieu of what we're now facing, um, we thought it was a great idea. And, uh, and, and again, this is something that I can't take credit for. I think my excellent executive director came, actually came up with this idea. Who is <laughs> of, <that? laughs> of we have to find a way of communicating with people the things that they should be doing. And um, the stenciling idea was, was, was born. And what we do with the stencils is we use sprayable chalk that's removable by water, rain, and we um, we we really strengthen and reiterate the message from the city of Milwaukee on how to prevent the spread of the COVID-19. I mean, we don't have a cure. Nobody has a cure right now, but we do know some of the main ways that it, that is transmitted, and we felt and we felt that warning people by doing some of the, one of the most simplest things in the world, spraying it on the concrete and spraying it on buildings where the, that's boarded up, where people could actually see as a reminder, wash your hands, practice social distancing of six mm -hmm. feet. Um, sanitize. Everyone knows using uh, sidewalk chalk, so it's not actual spray paint, but sidewalk chalk. Yeah, that's what I said, spray chalk. <laughs> yes, yes, spray chalk. <laughs> it washes the way after a while. Yes. And and um and and the most important thing, stay at home if you can. Yeah. You know? So just as reminders, as people walk, they look down, they stand on a bus stop, it's right there, we're placing them in front of bus stops, just as a friendly reminder to do what you can if you can to help prevent the spread of the COVID-19. Bobby, we can't talk about everything that you do, but I do want to let the people who are viewing this know that you know Bobby has supported our ring event where we were able to get 90 ring product products yes. out to the community who supported uh and has been integral with the spirit of wakanda we, we've done it for three two years we're going to look at doing it for a second year but that <laughs> yeah. that'd be the case of COVID 19 but a yeah african festival um bobby's even supported us um with bringing art to the community working with local artists to bring art to the community i mean bobby there's so many things we can talk about that you do I do want to say as we as we wrap this up though, um, you know, from the president, our former president of the United States, President Barack Obama, to many others, including I want to say, um, um, uh, uh, and I can't think of his name, but just many others in the community, I would say have started he or he or she has started their role in community organizing. For the people who are coming behind us. Is there any advice that you would give to a person who really wants to be effective when it comes to community organizing? What um, pieces of advice, if you can, um, share with them and say, this is the, what, what's, what would be key for them to be effective and actually either get in the field and then being effective in the field? Uh, Keith, I, I really couldn't stress enough with informing yourself, becoming informed one of the keys to change is to know how things are designed to be. So you can, if you don't know how it's designed to be, then you don't really know if it's effective or not effective, doing the job it's supposed to be doing or hindering the community. 
So I would say one of the key things is to become informed. And one of the best ways to be informed is to go out to talk, go out and talk to people that are informed. Come mm -hmm. join community organizations. Um, learn, don't be afraid to learn what you don't know. Mm -hmm. And that and that really involves rolling up your sleeve and just engaging. Wow. Bobby, I, I want to say thank you for this time. We're going to get this out for the people because they understand uh, uh, your background and who you are and why we, we get so much done. We get so much so much stuff done in there with side is because of you, man. You you're able to really turn at a pivot, make things happen. Uh, you know, despite my <laughs> this is all we have to do, and there's more to it. You are able to take it on. So, man, we really appreciate it. We appreciate your not only. Yeah. Your commitment to the other side. We appreciate your your um, personal attitude. You bring a a joy and a delightfulness to this position, and you people. No one says a bad word about you because there's no bad word to say. You really are supportive, and you and you try to make things happen. And I appreciate as the executive director of the Neighborhood Side Partners. I appreciate that. I know the community, our anchor institutions, and so many others really appreciate what you do and how you do it for our community. What keep uh thank you, but I'd like to say this. Oh, hold up. It just cut it, it just cut out for some reason. I can't hear you. I think it could be just the internet. It's one last thing before I go though. Yes, um, sir. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? I can't hear can't hear you. Okay. You just you jump back in. Can you hear me now? Okay. Right, we can hear each other now. All right, so one last thing that I that I, I want to say before we wrap this up is that uh, the background that I have and that leads me up to this point, that led me up to this point, uh, and still, it's important to have an organization like the New West Side Partners that allow you to go into the community and and take a chance. Um, it's it's it, it, it costs money, and having great anchor organizations having great leadership to allow us the platform to do these things is key. And the New SI Partners is an awesome place to work and it has awesome, awesome staff members. I don't I do any of this by myself. <laughs> well, Bobby, thank you for taking the time out today. And um, I know you're a busy man, so we're gonna let you get back to doing what you're doing, community organizing via the internet and via the phone <laughs> and everything else we're doing. But thank you for your time, man. Thank you for allowing us to, to peer into your world. I appreciate it. Thank you again, Keith, for everything. Thanks, man.